Hi everybody, Redneck Reloader here. Uh, I am in the midst of setting up a new reloading area. Uh, I'm still in an apartment. Haven't bought a new house yet, uh, looking. But uh, uh, my uh, girlfriend has this nice workbench area in the basement and told me to set up and do whatever I want down here. So I said, that's gonna be my new reloading area for a while. Uh, I bought a new press, it's on the way. I decided to make a change from my old RCBS Junior that I've used for years. And I don't have it yet, but I bought something new that I'm gonna add to my bench. And I got that set up today, and I'm gonna reload some nine millimeter. And I wanna show this to you. Um, this is called the Lee App, A-P-P. -P. It stands for Automatic Processing Press. And I'm gonna bring you in closer and show this thing to you. Kind of neat. I've got a few issues with it, but uh, I think it's going to be a good addition to my reloading bench. So this is the Lee app, and it's a it's a press, but it's not like a single stage press, and it's not like a progressive press. It's sort of a mix in between. So the way this operates, it comes with some assorted tubes and a whole bunch of other little plastic parts that you have to set up, fingers and things for different calibers. And some comes with three shell holders, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But the way this operates is this uses standard dies. Right now, I have an RCBS nine millimeter decapping resizing die in there. And you can also put a die in from the bottom. It's got this little catch container there, and that's for catching your primers. Um, or at least the way I have it set up right now. Let me bring it a little better to show you. So this will catch your primers after you decap. Um, this is set up to automate a lot of these processes that we do that get a little bit redundant sometimes and just kind of speeds it up a little bit. Let me bring you back so you can get a little bit better view of the whole thing. So you can decap, um, resize, Flare your case mouth. Um, you can also bullet resize. Uh, you can prime with this, although not automated. And you can actually use this as a single stage press. And I'm actually gonna do that today. I've got about 50 rounds of nine millimeter. I'm gonna try to load this afternoon. And I don't have my other press in yet. So I'm just gonna try using this one. Um, but the way this operates, you set the right tube up and you get everything dialed in, which takes a little bit. And then I've got cases loaded in here. I've got one in here right now. And you just operate it like any other press. You bring it down, but you can see these fingers and this arm sliding back to catch the next case. So I'm gonna come down, decap, my primer drops. Then when I lift it back up, this has grabbed another case. It's gonna bring it over push this case out of the way. It's going to go down this little ramp and eventually I'm going to fix something here to catch them. But right now I just got them going to a box on the floor. It'll push that one out of the way and then feed your next one. And you can go through and decap and resize as fast as you want to in theory. Now, one of the problems I've had with this is you have to select the right size tube for your cases. And this is the one that should work for nine millimeter. Um, they say to pick the one that they will just fit in kind of, not snugly, but you know, properly. And this should be it. But this little plastic piece down here, there's something that causes them to hang a little bit. So right now, the next one is hung and not dropping down. And I have to play with it to try to get it to drop. So I went to the next largest size and tried that and the problem with that is when they were dropping out of the bottom the cases were falling over sideways so i had to go back to this one so there's something that hangs these up in there now once i get that knocked down it works fine for a while and then a case will get hung it's just plastic so i'm assuming there's a little lip or something in there so what i'll probably do is uh, maybe take a little piece of sandpaper and clean it up or something. But overall, I've been pretty happy with this. It take, took me about an hour, I'd say, to get it installed and set up. Um, 
it would probably now, I think, if I wanted to switch calibers and maybe go with like to switch over to like 45 ACP or something, say it's hung again, um, probably take me 15 minutes or so to change it over. It's not something I would want to do a whole lot of. This would be nice to get set up and just leave set up. Or if I had, you know, a couple hundred cases to run, I would do the setup. But if I had like 30, I don't think I would change the setup for that. I think that uh, I would rather just leave it. Now it's starting to kind of knock those out a little bit better. I kind of vibrated a little bit. That one's not wanting to come. So whatever it is in there that's catching them, I just, something isn't quite right. The alignment, or there's an edge in there or something. So that's gonna take a little bit of work on my part to figure out what exactly is going on. It's not too bad to set this up the first time. Um, like I said, now that I've done it once, to change calibers, I'm guessing maybe 15 minutes or so, and I could do it. But it's just kind of finicky. You gotta do a little tweaking with it to get it working right. But I think once you got it set up correctly, you'd be in pretty good shape. So I'm still playing, trying to get this set up and working properly. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I don't remember exactly what I paid for this. It was a little over a hundred dollars so for that i think it's a pretty good price the only other complaint i have i'm gonna bring you around back and show you is the mounting these engineers i feel could have done a better job with this but i've got this mounted to my bench using lag bolts and these are really hard to get to there's not really a way to get to those easily and you can't get a socket on them um, you know, Lee talks about mounting this using their little um, mounting plate and stand and using nuts and bolts. So yeah, if you're mounting to a thin plate where you could put a short bolt with a nut on the back, it's fine. But to put a big long lag bolt down into that wood, this was kind of a pain in the butt to work around. They could have just brought this casting out a little bit further and made room to clear those holes and it would make life a whole lot easier for mounting. Um, but other than that, the quality wise and stuff, I think it's pretty good. This is all plastic. You can kind of see how these fingers work in here. Um, these lower fingers here grip the case. And then this is a pusher. So you, you change this pusher. Here's one that's off, you can see it. This is for pushing cases. This is for feeding bullets. And you snap these on. And the height, it's a different height for your different case length. And different bullet sizes but when the bullet you can see those well, let me get my angle right you can see those jaws open so when they go back and the bullet drops into them then when you bring it forward it closes around them and pushes it over and then when you back it up they open again so it's just plastic but it works so uh, I'm going to um, finish decapping these and then I'm going to build a case mount and then I'm going to finish reloading. So I'll come back. Okay, I finally managed to get all those cases decapped. I'm still having the same feeding issue. I'm just going to have to work on that, I guess. If, if I can get this thing dialed in and working properly, I think I'm really going to like it, especially for decapping. There's all my primers caught down here. Didn't drop a one. Uh, I'm going to change the dies now and do bell the case mouth, but I wanted to show you uh, something. Uh, the way, the reason that this press works is Lee developed a new shell holder for this, and it looks like that. So it's got a slot cut all the way across it. You can get a focus on it. And it allows the case to come in one side and exit the other. You can use a standard shell holder on this if you want to use it as a single acting press, but these are really the only, well, this is the only way you can use it if you're auto feeding. And these do work really nice. It comes with three, which they say is the most common sizes. Um, there's a chart on the back of the package. This is uh, the package that came in and there's a chart 
showing the different calibers and which holder they use. And they do hit most of the calibers I need with the ones that they included with this. Most of the pistols, I am gonna have to get one for 45 ACP. They do have one for 223. However, I'm not sure why, because they actually say on here, because of these shell holders, where they're only gripping the case from the sides instead of around three sides, not the full length size rifle rounds on this because you'll end up with stuck cases because they're just going to pull off. So I, I'm not sure why they did the 223. I don't know what you would do with this with 223, but it's there. Um, I'm going to change this die now. Now, these do have the Lee, I forget what they call them. It's their quick change die. And kind of hard to get in there too. They do include one of their little wrenches with this to grab onto that thing with. So you turn it a quarter of a turn and then it comes out in theory. There it comes. I'm not a big fan of those, you notice? I'd rather just screw my dies in, but um, then your regular standard die just screws into this. So I'm, like I said, I'm using RCBS dies today. Now you can set these if you wanna set these, set the lock screw, lock them down and keep them in place. But keep your setting. I've noticed this one, the lock screw is already falling out of it. No, not the, oh, there it is. So uh, those apparently are kind of easy to lose. So. <laughs> Uh, let me tighten this up real quick, just so I don't lose it again. See, I actually have those on my other little hand press, and I don't use them on it either. I mean, you have to use them as far as screwing your dies into that in order to lock it in, but I don't have a bunch of them and interchange them or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my expander die now, my neck expander die, and I'll check back with you. Well, I'm back. I had to stop for a minute, take a break, because the UPS man came. And I got my new press. So I don't have time to fool with it today because I gotta go to work and I'm gonna have to work all weekend. So it'll be a few days before I get it set up. But if you're wondering what I got, it's the Lee 50th anniversary kit with the Lee Challenger press, which I will make a video about that and go into detail why I picked that press and why I bought a kit. Cause normally to be honest with you, I don't like kits, <clears throat> but I'll just be honest. I just got a really good deal on that. It's about half the price of what it usually is. So I was going to buy a press anyway, might as well get the whole kit cause it was about the same price. So anyway, I've got my expander plug in here now and I'm opening my case mouth to accept the bullets. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention, you saw me fumbling with that die, getting it in and out. I hadn't used these Lee breech locks in a while, which you better get used to them now since I got another press. But I forgot when you're using these, you're supposed to take the lock ring off of your die and lock it down with that. And so I still had the lock ring on it. That's why I was kind of fumbling with it. It goes a lot smoother without the lock ring. So I think it's getting better. I've run a few through here, expanding the case mount, and it seems to be feeding better. So maybe the plastic and the little bird is starting to get wore off or something. That's what I was kind of hoping would happen, but that nah, spoke too soon there. But you see, as long as you're so and steady, it works. I notice if you kind of bump this sometimes they'll come down that's something i'm gonna have to keep working on with it but when it's set up it does make this stuff a lot smoother and a lot faster it's not like a progressive press i don't know who this is really marketed to um got another one just hung there it doesn't want to fall i'm just gonna have to get in there and work on that it's not the tube 
it's down here in the base where it's hanging. But if you're somebody who's going to be shooting a few thousand rounds a week, I'm assuming you're probably going to have a progressive press. So you probably won't need this. And if you're somebody like me who doesn't shoot those kind of quantities, then and I reload on a single stage press, and yeah, if I have a bunch of brass to process, this is great for me, but the setup time and trying to get this little stuff dialed in is such, once I got this set up for a certain caliber, I probably wouldn't change it very often. So if I have a setup for nine millimeter and I've got, you know, 50, 40 cal I'm gonna run, I'm probably just gonna run those on my single stage press because by the time I get this all set up and changed over and dialed in, I could be done running those. Now, if I had a few hundred, that'd be a different matter. But it is a nice little addition to my workbench. Once I get it dialed in and working right, I will use it, but I'll probably just set it up for whatever my most common caliber is and just keep it set up that way. Because um, unless, I get better at working with it and it gets easier to work with and easier to change over. I just don't think I'm going to want to fool with it that much. Um, one thing about reloading, one of the reasons I don't use a progressive press is I just don't run through that much. But also, I find this relaxing. I'm not all about speed. When I'm down here doing this, it's kind of my therapy. So I don't mind taking my time and doing this. But if this can speed things up a little bit for me, that's great. But at the moment, it's kind of giving me some aggravation. I think once everything's dialed in, it would work good. But just working on this little stuff is going to be a pain. And that's what I've heard from guys who use progressive presses. Sometimes they have little problems with them and they're hard to get dialed in just right. Once you get them dialed in just right, that's fine. But... I just don't know if I want all that headache. And this is already giving me enough headaches. This video is not going at all like I hoped. I thought this was gonna be a neat little tool, but it's turning into kind of a little pain in the rear end. I might do an update later if I figure out what's causing this and get it fixed properly. But, that's it. So, all of them deep primed, case melt expanded. So now, basically I'm done with this, except I am going to reload those rounds. Although I may not do it today because I'm going to have to go to work here soon. I'm running out of time. This is, I fooled with this thing a lot longer than I thought I would today. But you can load with this. I think you can see, you can just set your die in here and just use this as a standalone single act, single stage press. And that's what I, eh, I was going to do it, but like I said, I'm kind of running out of time today. I don't think I'm gonna finish it up today. I'll probably do it another day. And I may just um, use my other press when I get it set up, because uh, for a single stage, this would probably work just fine, but it is, this is aggravating me. I'm gonna have to work on that. But this gives you a look at the APP press and I think I showed you about everything that came with it. The shell holders, it comes with pretty good directions. A little key wrench relief for adjusting these things. Um, this bottle comes out of the bottom and it's actually another uh, of those little breech lock deals. It twists and comes out. As you can see, same thing. So you can put a die in up to the bottom. That's where you put your shell holder and this screws on and you can dump out your old primers. You can also use this to catch bullets. If you're sizing bullets, you size them down and they drop into this and all of your size bullets come out the bottom. So I'm gonna think, show you one more thing and then I'm gonna stop this. I think. Yeah, I wanna show you one more thing on this. I've got this kind of, I've got these breech locks out of here. Um, this is the part that goes in the bottom that holds the shell holder and catches your spent primers. And, you know, this is a, it's just kind of a standard breech lock um, thing. You can take this out 
and I'm going to prime on this. And in order to prime on this, you need something. You need the Lee Ram Prime Kit. And that's this. This comes with it. So you've got your um, two priming plungers for small and large primers. And you've got this little holder where your shell holder goes. Now, I could use the one that comes with this one. It's going to be hard to keep it centered. So I'm just going to use a standard uh, shell holder that I use with my RCBS presses. And the way you do this is on the bottom, we're going to take this bottle and take the shell holder out of it, and we're going to install the RAM prime. And this is for the small primers. That's going to come in up through the bottom and lock into place. And then in the top, we're going to use this top section with the shell holder on it. That drops in, turns a quarter turn, and locks in place. Now when you lower the ram, you can see the priming plunger comes up through there. So you take a case, and I know I've almost forgotten what these things are, but these are actually small pistol primers. Set one in here, lower the case down. No ram prime wasn't in there good. You can see I don't rehearse. I'm gonna turn that. So that when I'm pulling those out, I'm not pulling the uh, shell holder out. Yeah, that's better. And you can see it's primed. So it's not the fastest way to prime, but I mean, it's not, it's not much worse than priming on a single stage press, which is how I normally do it. Although my new setup there is going to be a little better. So as I said, this, is not designed for reloading. This press is really designed just for automating those processes and stuff, but you can reload with it. So I've already resized and deprimed my, I've already resized and deprimed my cases, build the case mouth, and now I'm priming them. So my last step would be just seating, you know, charging them and then seating and crimping, which you can easily see how you can seat and crimp on this. Once again, using it like a single stage press. So it is a versatile little thing. If this is all I had to load with, I would. And I would probably rather do this kind of stuff on a regular press, but it is possible to do it on this. It's just, I wouldn't say it's the best way, but it's a handy little press and it doesn't take up any amount of space whatsoever. And it is well made. It's fairly sturdy. I know they said, uh, you know, not to do rifle rounds on it because of the case holder. I mean, yeah, the shell holder, but if you were using a standard shell holder, I wouldn't hesitate to run 223 on this. I think it would, uh, as far as the sturdiness of the press, I think it would handle it okay. So it seems to be a pretty good little unit, but that's how using the Lee Ram Prime, you can prime your cases on this. So that's the Lee App Press. Uh, for the money I paid for it, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was a little over a hundred dollars. Um, it's not a bad investment. I think once I get this dialed in, where it's running smoothly. I think it'll be a nifty little tool, but uh, it's a little frustrating at the moment, but I think I can get it figured out and I think it'll be a pretty good little addition to my workbench there. So that's the Lee App Press. Thanks for watching. I know this uh, video has been a little disjointed and goofy, but I'm kind of just letting you see the problems as, as I come across them. Uh, that's what I do with all my videos. I don't, uh, which I don't know if it's good or bad, but I don't rehearse them a whole lot or anything. I just kind of let you see them as they go and I leave my errors in there when I make them. So 
So some of you are still watching, so I guess it's not too bad. So thank you very much. And uh, you'll be seeing me here in a few days. I'm gonna get that other press set up. I'm also gonna do a video on the Lee um, factory crimp die. That's something that I have seen a lot of misunderstandings about. And I have seen guys give those things almost mythical properties. And I do own a couple and I do use them sometimes but for very specific purposes and i will go over all that when i do the video with you so stay tuned keep watching i appreciate all y'all support and god bless you